Hi, I'm Annie Botticelli, and this is the Storyteller Forecast for Gemini for November 2018. Go to my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, and check out my wealth of free resources and other resources on there to assist you, including I am accessible now for live readings. So if you would like for me to um, check out your chart, I'm off of my sabbatical, and I'm taking on new clients. So you can check that out at AnnieHelpsYou.com. So what is going on in the month of November? We have Venus still in retrograde for half the month. Then as it transitions out, we have Mercury going into retrograde and we have Jupiter going into Sagittarius. That's the big star of the show. That's what we're gonna focus on to see where it's going to go in the Gemini charts, the early, middle, and late degree placements. And also I wanna talk about some other things, general, um, energies for Gemini for this month because we have planets besides Jupiter moving into Sagittarius. So we have the beginning of the month, Mercury is in Sag, the Sun is going to move into Sag later in the month, and about a third of the way through the month, Jupiter is going to go into Sag. So what that means for Gemini is overstimulation. You may notice around this time every year, you get very overstimulated and that's because the fire and air energies that uh, Gemini is an air sign, um, Sag is a fire sign and when the planets get into Sag, they start making oppositions or 180 degree angles with your Gemini placements and that causes overstimulation. It causes um, a lot of activity, a lot of expression, a lot of chatting, a lot of however you express yourself in double, triple time compared to how you usually are. So prolific expression. Also, a lot of times, a lot of mobility, moving around, being extra busy. And you might think that that's just because it's the holiday time, perhaps, but it's really because um, even if the holidays weren't at this point, you would still be experiencing this because that is a natural consequence of the planets in Sagittarius. And everyone kind of feels that, but Gemini energies feel that even more. So we're going to talk in the general transit report about some of the other things, including the fact that this month is one of the rare months where there are way more positive aspects than there are challenging ones. So later at the end of the report, I'll go into the sweet days, the few to watch, also some other implications of Jupiter in the sign of Sagittarius. But in general, I wanna talk about, and I actually have a surprise for you too, um, where Jupiter is going to be moving for your placement. Because Jupiter brings expansion and luck and opportunities and fortune and growth. And um, we wanna see where in your chart that's going to be moving. It's not the same for all of you depending on your placements. So we're going to talk about that and we're going to do it through a visual format that I have been wanting to bring to you. So my surprise to you in celebration of my six year anniversary doing YouTube horoscopes and in celebration of Jupiter going into Sagittarius, which is my sign and I'm very excited about it. Um, and I think it's very beneficial for everybody. I have finally figured out how to get visuals for the early, middle and late degree charts so that you can see for yourself why I take the time to talk about the different placements being different depending on where your placement is, okay? So if you're born in the first third of the sign, the first 10 days, you're early, the second 10 days of the sign, you're middle, and the last 10 days, you're late, and the same goes for the degrees. So the first um, zero to nine degrees is early, 10 to 19 is middle, and 20 to 29 is late. So I'll talk to you about a couple of things for um, Jupiter. Well, actually, let's just wait. Let me just show you in the chart where Jupiter's going to be for you. And then we'll talk about the implications of being in that place. Okay, so Jupiter wants you to go big. Jupiter wants you to expand as far as you can. It wants you to plant seeds, as many seeds as possible, because anything that you plant now, seeds that you plant now, even if they don't come up during the transit, there is a whole rest of the 12 year cycle that they can pop up. Also, Jupiter wants you to expand the energy or understand the energy of expansion as a relative topic, meaning expansion for you might look different than expansion for someone else, but the general energy of expansion is coming for most people. Often, Jupiter in Sag will bring more freedom. Um, Jupiter in general can bring that, and often it can bring relief. Sometimes there's an exacerbation of certain issues in order to bring them out and get them cleared up, but Jupiter is a solution-oriented planet, so usually right next to the escalation of the issue will be the solution. Okay, so remember that astrological transits show up weak links, so if you have challenges that come, 
that's Jupiter showing you that in order to expand out as far as you really want to go and you can go, you have to make sure your foundation is strong because if you try to expand on a weak foundation, everything's going to crumble. So one of the points of all of these outer planet transits in general is how you're going to um, shore up your foundation for the future. So weak links may show up as in an effort to help you to strengthen them. Okay, so let's look in the charts, specifically for early, middle, and late, where Jupiter is going to be moving. Okay, so now, finally, I have the visual for you as to why I differentiate between early, middle, and late degree placements. Okay, so we're gonna get back to the report and what I, how I feel Jupiter will affect each of your Gemini placements here soon. I just want to get this done so that you can see it and have the visual and understand it because many magical things can click with this. So this is an early degree chart using four degrees because that's right in the middle point between zero and nine degrees, which is the early degree placements. Okay, so first 10 days of the sign, first zero to nine degrees early. Then we've got middle using 14 degrees, that's the half point between 10 and 19 degrees, which are the middle degree placements. Middle degree placements are the second 10 birthdays of the month. Late degree placements, I'm using 24 degrees because that's the middle of the middle, um, I mean, a middle of the, at the late degree placement. So between 20 and 29, that's the last 10 days of the sign and the last, um, you know, 20 to 29 degrees. So that's midway here. You can see why most astrologers don't deal with this. First of all, they, like I said, they either don't know that these charts are different or they know and they don't want to deal with it or they don't want to lose people by um, having the confusion. But of course, I'm an astrology educator, so I take the time to do it because there is a huge difference for, for many people in these charts. Okay, so we're looking at, I will look at three charts every month for the horoscopes, not just one. So now let's look at Jupiter. Okay, Jupiter is the star of the show this month and beyond. You can see why I'm calling this energy radical crossroads. Now, even for your later degree, your later degree placements, this crossroads is coming later for you. But the theme is being brought up now. Okay, so check out where Jupiter is imminently in a week or so from the time this chart is for. Jupiter is going to be in the seventh house. So this year for early Gemini's is all about Jupiter expanding the seventh house. When I'm done with this snippet here, I'll explain what things you can see and how to best use Jupiter in the seventh house. But I want you to see how for, let's get that out of there. Okay. For you middle degree placements, check out how Jupiter is staggered. It's not just Jupiter. It's all the planets are over clockwise. All of these planets are shifted clockwise. Okay, so Jupiter here is where? It's in the sixth house. Is it right about to go in there? No, it's got longer to go. So it's going to be anywhere from a few months to longer, depending on your exact middle degree placement before Jupiter starts working and accentuating the seventh house. For now, and for the foreseeable future, it's still in the sixth house for your middle degree placements. Although in a couple of months, you early middles will start to have this there. All right, now here's the big whopper that want you to see. Look at the late degree chart. Is that Jupiter anywhere near that seventh house? No. So if we're talking about, yay, Jupiter in seventh house for all Geminis, that's crap. <laughs> it's not there. You can see it's not there. If you have a later degree placement, everything's shifted to the right. Okay. So Jupiter is going to be in this sixth house for a long time and it's not going to be in that seventh house. So no, Jupiter's not accentuating that area. You do have other things there. So there's the, the seventh house themes are coming in for you as well, but it's not, it's not the s same reason. And it's not accurate to say that Jupiter is affecting your seventh house. So for you, very strongly sixth house. So we'll talk about that too. But I'm calling this radical crossroads because the late degree placements have been going through this energy of Saturn moving through this point here. Okay. So this year, depending on your placement is very much having Saturn move through this. So you've probably moved through this crossroads, um, but you still have more coming. Okay. So whenever an outer planet moves across the seventh house cusp or this first house cusp, it makes a 180 degree angle 
with this um, with this placement. And 180 degree angles bring pressure and they bring crossroads. 100% of the time, I have seen thousands of individuals through chart reading plus horoscope plus you know my apprentices. 100% of the time, when you have something cross over, the first first, fourth, seventh, or tenth house cusp, the person is in major um, crossroads. Okay, so for you early degree placements, and soon, very, very soon for you middle degree placements, that energy of crossroads is starting this Jupiter cycle, okay, because Jupiter is going to be here. What's it going to do? It's going to kick a 180 degree angle here. Seventh house cusp means everything involving your relationships. That also kicks back to the relationship with yourself. The first house cusp, that means this 180 degree opposition, opposing force, is changing, making you stretch how you see yourself. And so for Geminis, this is the theme. Early degree people, you're going through it now. You've been feeling it already. Middle degree people, you're having it coming. It's going to be more full on for you in the coming months. Late degree people, from the Jupiter perspective, I was giving you a reference from Saturn because that had recently happened to you all. But the um, the Jupiter perspective, this this crossroads is more into next year. Okay, but what it brings is expansion. The theme for Gemini is expansion of the seventh house relationships, working with people, and then yourself, your view of yourself, stretching your view of yourself to fit your expanded view of relationships, stretching your expanded view of relationships to fit around your expanded view of yourself, a lot of pressure, you know, um, but in general, Jupiter uh, pressures are lighter than like the Saturn one. So major crossroads for you guys. Okay, so the last thing I want to show you is just again, using this example, I want it to, to come clear that your charts will look different depending. And the, at the, lo- the later, the further out the um, planet is from us, like the longer it takes in its orbit, the longer it takes for the late degree placements to catch up with where the early degree placements are experiencing things. So you can see, we talked about Saturn for those late degree people. Look at where it is for early. It's very solidly in the eighth house. Middle degree people, you see it? There it is. That's in the seventh, borderline eighth. Okay, so not quite for all of you middle degree placements, you have Saturn in the eighth. You still have it in the seventh. And then you late degree people, look at where it is for you. You can't even get it in the circle. It's way over there. It's way over there. So recently you had it have this crossroad thing that we talked about. That crossroads here for earlier Geminis, they went through that years ago. You've recently gone through it. See? makes a very, very big difference. Okay, so now that we've established that, I'm going to talk about how Jupiter is going to affect whether it's the seventh or sixth house um, for you Gemini placements. Wasn't that fun? Okay, great. So now that you have the visual and you see why I take the time to talk about early, middle, and late degree placements, that the charts do look different and they do stagger the times when um, energies shift, we can talk about what these manifestations can look like for you. So Jupiter moving into the seventh house for Gemini brings radical crossroads, okay? Because when it's crossing over that cusp, over the seventh house cusp, it's making an opposition to the first house cusp. In certain charts, it will also make that 90 degree angle to the 10th house and a 90 degree angle to the fourth house, which means that at bare minimum, you early degree placement. So um, May born Gemini's or first 10 degrees, zero to nine or 10 um, for your rising or sun, you're going to be having imminently major crossroads. And for the rest of you, this is coming. It will be staggered, but you might start to sense it as early as now. So the main things being highlighted are relationships, how you are in relationships and your relationship to yourself, as well as your image, what you're, how you see yourself, how you put yourself out there, how other people see you. There's a lot of pressure on relationship space, meaning Expansion wants to happen and not all of your relationships are going to be able to withstand this expansion. Maybe you're trying to expand and some certain relationships are keeping you at a place where you were at before that you no longer resonate with. But every time you try to expand individually, your relationship isn't holding up. So that's one way it um, happens. And other ways, it's just that you and your partner or, or you know, your clients or whoever your seventh house manifestations are going to be, um, 
are just evolving and expanding together uh, very smoothly, but often there's a little bit of tension, you know, when you're expanding into a different uh, zone, it's in a different paradigm, it's definitely, um, you know, can put pressure on it. 180 degree angle is often a, a degree of pressure. But ultimately, you know, this is a positive thing in general. And for those of you who are feeling like work and home issues coming up strongly, you may also have this 90 degree angle thing I was talking about at the, with the other aspects of your chart where home, work, your, your job, your home, your living situation may also be under major pressure, which is part of this major um, radical crossroads. So Jupiter in the seventh house for you early degree placements and coming soon for you middle degree placements means expansion of partnership. That's the quite very simple way of explaining it. Partnerships can be marriage, partnerships can be um, clients, can be anyone that you work with, can be any one-on-one -on -one relationships that you have. So you can, for people who are self-employed, this is often like a major boost for your client base. A whole base of clients can be built now that you can just keep building on over the next Jupiter cycles that come. So that's very exciting. And many people will move further in the relationships they've already had established. So if you've met the love of your life, you might get engaged, you may get married, you may have children. Jupiter tends to be additive. So it kind of adds to. So whatever you had, let's say you were single, sometimes it adds the person, then it adds the next step and the next step and the next step. So over the course of time of Jupiter moving through this placement, it often has an additive effect. Now in the event that you have some major dysfunction in your relationships, it can definitely exacerbate those issues and amplify them because it's trying to show you what you have to heal and what you have to resolve. And then when you resolve those things, then the expansion can take place. This can also have to do with finding your perfect practitioners as far as people that you need to help you with something. Um, delegating, you know, if you need a dentist, if you need an assistant, if you need to find somebody that plays a role for you, um, this can really be helpful. Jupiter in this position can also bring good press and expansion of your public issue or um, public image. Optimism towards relationships and motivation to bust through issues is often stronger at this time as well. And trying to take the high road, peace and diplomacy and mediation and things like that could also um, be helpful. So if you've had a long-standing issue with somebody, this can um, bring it to the forefront and then also to assist with healing. Attention to art or topics of other aesthetic appeal will continue to expand. So it could be your own personal home office decorating. If you're in that line of work, that could be expanded. Anything having to do with aesthetics. Okay, so the middle degree placements will still have some of the sixth house expansion left and coming soon into the seventh house expansion that we just discussed. And you late degree placements, you'll have a while longer in this sixth house before you really start to see that relationship expansion. So the sixth house energies have to do with health and again, finding the right practitioner. So in this case, a health related practitioner or someone to clear your clutter or someone to organize things for you it has to do with organization and it has to do with um, your healing your body and getting your daily rhythm and regimen. So anything having to do with medical, uh, diagnostics, healing, doctors, alternative practitioners, acupuncture, yoga, diet, lifestyle, this wants to seek to bring you better health, and it often does. But again, if you have something that's not resolved, sometimes it has to get a little worse, then you find out the answer, then you have the information you need, then you know how to target, you're looking for the practitioners, and then you can heal it. If you're self-employed, your business has a great chance to boom. If you are working for someone, you may find that your workload either gets expanded or that you expand into roles that you've been wanting, or that there are some increased issues at work that lead to some increased relief at work. So could increase busyness, could increase relief. You know, it has an expansive effect on the work sector, whatever that winds up looking like. Many people will wind up adding a second line of income at this point. So if you have a regular job, you may find that you're doing some things on the side um, and that would be very supportive in general for the transit. The sixth house is also the house of pets. So if you're a pet monger, you may find that you add to your pet, pet supplies um, during this time. Also, you may have pets that need more attention 
or you may just have more time to spend with them. People who were not in the realms of using animals for work or using animals for therapy, they might get into those lines of work and people who are already in those lines of work may expand that work. So working with animals like service animals or um, anything like that definitely has a lot of fertile ground now. So these are the things that are most on my mind for Gemini's. Now I wanna talk about these sweet aspects and there are a lot of them. Like I said, there are more sweet aspects this month compared to challenging aspects than usual. This is really cool this way. Yes, we're still dealing with the awkwardness of the Mercury going into retrograde. We've been in the shadow period. Yes, we're dealing with Venus going direct. I've spoken at length about Venus retrograde. If you haven't checked out my October report, then definitely do that because it will still be current in November because I talk about where Venus is retrograde for each of the placements and that's going to be in effect um, all through November and even a little bit beyond because the, the post-transit shadow period extends into December. So we are in this um, last stretch before we break out of this year of retrograde, personal planet retrograde, so you might feel it coming. It might not be time to launch certain things yet, but you might find a lot of things gelling that you had been working on and things just coming into you from past work. If you have some unresolved things, those will likely also be brought up as it relates to love and money and self-esteem. Um, also any kind of appearance issues or things on um, for your physicality. This is still not the best time in general for doing any body art or body work or cosmetic surgeries. Um, health surgeries are separate. Of course, if you need a health surgery, like a, a, an important medical thing that's time sensitive, this isn't talking about that. This is specifically cosmetic. So the better time for those things would be um, like towards the end of December or in January. We'll be very open for that. Okay, so now let's look at the general transits and I'll tell you the sweet dates as well as the ones to watch and some implications of the transits as well as more about Jupiter and Sag. So my theme of the month of November 2018 for all signs is defiant optimism and relentless hope. And I'm getting this from the energy of Jupiter in Sagittarius. We've just talked at length about how Jupiter in each of the houses of you know your individual sign can bring that energy of Jupiter into certain areas of your life. But the general experience for everybody that everyone has access to has to do with this increased energy of sparkling luck, defiant optimism, relentless hope, unprecedented growth, glorious expansion, because Jupiter is so happy to be in its own sign and this only happens for one year every 12 years. So it's a very big deal. You can think back to what was going on 12 years ago and the kinds of themes and things that showed up and you can see how it may relate to this um, current transit. Of course, there are different factors at play now than there were then as well. It's always more complicated. And of course, not every person is going to experience the energy of defiant optimism and relentless hope. You know, we shade how we see things with how we are and how, what our outlook is or what we have going on in our lives or whatever our um, more personal chart uh, has going on that we may not be able to see in the general horoscope. So we see things sometimes as we are, are or as influences are around us, not always how they, how they really are, right? That's a, a reality is subjective. But in any case, this energy of teaching, learning, speaking, writing, publishing, religious, spiritual work, um, international travel, international business, global connections, different countries, different cultures, different languages, general expansion, general happiness, general freedom is this theme that's running through for the next year from the end of 2018 through the end of 2019. So Jupiter is the natural ruler of Sagittarius in the ninth house. It's most happy here and exuberant. We, um, can see this energy of one's perceptions or beliefs being broadened. Many people will have um, learning frenzies where they feel so driven to learn more and the things that they're learning may be more diverse in nature. Maybe they'll go headlong into one course of study or maybe it's a general course of study under which there are lots of little pieces. Jupiter likes to get its fingers in a lot of pudding pies. So Jupiter favors br um, breadth, sometimes even over depth. You know, it, it's the more seeds you plant now during this time, the more um, plants can grow from the seeds that you've planted over the next 12 years. 
So zealotry with a belief system or studies can definitely happen because Jupiter is the energy of excess. So we'll see this extra oomph being added to however um, Jupiter is manifesting. So the energy of um, legal matters can also come through in a very big way. Uh, one of the rulers of the legal realm is Sagittarius and the ninth house. So sometimes there's an amplification of a problem that's already brought to the law. Sometimes, you know, this escalation brings it, but it will very likely be in the forefront over the next year. So we still have Venus retrograde until the middle of the month. And so we're not going to be seeing clearly in love, beauty, and money in many regards. However, uh, Venus retrograde can also bring in things that we plan to do for a long time, things that we were hoping for, things that we were working towards can magically start to come in in wonderful ways. If there are issues in love, self-esteem, or money or finances, sometimes those issues come back up to be dealt with. Sometimes things that we've dealt with in the past now come in as blessings in this time. So definitely check out my resources. I've done so much work for you on Venus retrograde, but I'm not going to get into that here because you can look at the October horoscope to see where Venus has been um, working in your sign. You can also look up Annie Botticelli, Venus retrograde to find my blog, very comprehensive, and my video, very comprehensive, that tells you everything that you need to know about Venus retrograde and how to navigate the transits. We are also going to have Mercury going retrograde. So that is um, another factor here that has to be taken into consideration. On the 15th, we have uh, the retreat of Mercury from 13 degrees of Sagittarius back to 27 degrees of Scorpio. So that rolls until around December 6th. And then the post shadow period runs until around uh, the 24th of December. So if you're trying to focus on Christmas shopping or um, whatever other holidays you celebrate, the later kind of last minute shoppers will probably benefit more here because by the time you're getting into mid-December, a lot of the shadow period of the Mercury, um, you know, uh, retrograde and post-shadow, uh, post-transit shadow period will have passed. So you're better off um, doing it later because there are a lot of factors involving money. But, you know, follow your flow. If you're feeling inspired, just do your thing. But it, it, you will notice if you track making pur purchases when Mercury's in retrograde over time that they tend to come in broken or the wrong size or you don't like it or the person doesn't like it. It increases the odds of communication about what people want and about what you're ordering. So the energy is more clear towards the middle of December. So, you know, the couple of weeks before the holiday times. So now, since we've found this amazing truth that there are more um, positive aspects this month than there are negative aspects, and there are a massive amount, this is a very rare month indeed, I wanna touch on some of those beautiful aspects. First, I'm gonna give you the dates that the positive aspects happen. And remember when I give you the dates that sometimes you feel the expression before or after that day. Don't cling too tightly to the actual day because these there are orbs of energy around each transit that can manifest in the days before or after. So November 1st, these are the sweet days or the sweet aspects. November 1st, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 11th, 15th, 20th, 22nd, 23rd, 25th, 26th, and 27th. So within all of that, we also have some of the best beautiful aspects of the year with Jupiter coming together with personal planets that can bring amazing luck, some of the luckiest days of the year. So we have those wrapped up into this, okay? So the likelihood of stress challenges and overstimulation or all general awkwardness is more likely in the days around the 15th, 19th, 22nd, 23rd, and 30th. So you notice a lot less here, a lot less. We start out November, oh, and by the way, I'm going to give you a quick rundown of some of the main transits and what you can expect with them. But to get more details about this and a written version of it, definitely go to my um, website, anniehelpsyou.com and sign up for my free email newsletter and you will get a month ahead the written version of the transit so that you can plan uh, around it because I know many people, including myself, do that. So the first we've got this amazing transit with Jupiter and Chiron in a trine. 
This is um, a major boost to ignite your superhero self. Anything that was a challenge in the past could come back to you in a wonderful way. Let's say you've had a problem, it's been ongoing, you've been working on it, or there's an area of life that you have to work harder in. This period of time could bring major blessings in those areas. We also have between the fifth and the sixth, the sun and Neptune being in a beautiful aspect that can boost love and intimacy and tenderness and spiritual breakthroughs and creativity. On the seventh, we've got the new moon at 15 degrees of Scorpio. And this is time to make your new moon and wishes of anything Scorpio related. So anything having to do with debt, loans, borrowing money, loaning money, inheritances, intimacy, sex, power, esoteric studies, psychology, anything along the Scorpio lines. Between November 8th and 9th, we've got Jupiter entering Sagittarius. Yay, this is very exciting. Very, very happy in that place. We've talked at length about that. And then on the ninth, we also have Venus making a beautiful aspect with Mars, the female energies and male energies blending beautifully at this time. The draw to connect socially and romantically may be stronger now and nice outcomes from that. Of course, still be aware that Venus is in retrograde, so you're not seeing clearly in love. And because of the closeness to um, Mercury being in retrograde, just keep it in mind as you're navigating through these relationship things. Um, but either way, things, energy returning from the past rather than new endeavors are better supported, but just male and female energies coming together can really sizzle now. It's also great for charisma and creativity and overall sweetness. Okay, so then on November 11th, we've got the sun in this beautiful aspect with Pluto. And this has to do with your determination and your drive and your purpose, which can feel extra strong right now. It's, even though Venus in retrograde doesn't work well to support major launches, this is a time that expansion of something already in process can be great. So if you're following a continuum, you have something that you've been doing and then you add to it, you enhance it. This is a period of time where things like that can do well, like edits or experimentation to work that's already in play or betas, you know, things like that. Maybe you might be able to get some information uh, there. Okay, so the 15th, Mars and Uranus are in a beautiful aspect. And this has to do with exciting and positive change, you know, uh, can have to do with wild insights that could turn out to have major merit. The energy of Uranus is fleeting. So if anything is going on in this time and you have a really good idea, Definitely write it down because you think when you have the idea, there's no way I'll forget this idea, but Uranus energy tends to, shh, you know, it's not very stable, but you could do something more substantial with it in the future if you hold on to it. So write down your crazy ideas. November 15th, we've got Venus direct at 25 degrees of Libra. That post shadow period ends December 18th. So we're moving um, out of the Venus retrograde cycle, but there's still like a hangover of it where you're still really feeling it and the rules still apply to a lesser degree with each day you pass out of the transit. November 15th also Mercury goes retrograde at 13 degrees of Sag back to 27 degrees of Scorpio. So Mercury can often bring back to us places, people, creative projects, ideas that were present before that can come back. You may find that you are very drawn to do work on publishing things. It's not the best time to launch them, but it is an amazing time to work with them in the backdrop, to do edits, to wrap up things in anticipation of this open window that's coming soon that we've been waiting for forever to push things out. I love the end of December and into January for pushing your publishing or other projects out. So this is a great time to tie up loose ends. November 19th, we've got one of those challenging aspects, Mars and Jupiter. So guard against injuries, especially now. You're more likely to get a cold or your resistance may be down from overstimulation. This can also manifest as like wanting to expand, but then expansion or movement being blocked. But that should pass over a few days. Then on November 20th, we have another sweet aspect with the sun and Chiron. So this can bring a wonderful chance for releasing heavy baggage. So Venus is making more of its movement direct. Maybe things that came up in that um, retrograde may um, be starting to shift now. And a notable physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual healing is very possible from this transit. 
which brings us to November 22nd through the 23rd, the full moon at almost one degree of Gemini. It is squaring Mars and opposing Mercury and squaring Neptune and opposing Jupiter, so it's a pretty busy, maybe could be very stressful full moon, but there are positive aspects that can come from it. So fullness, completion, drama, fruition, coming to anything Gemini, you know, any travel things, you could have a trip come up um, or, or being followed through with, you could have something notable with your car. Be extra careful driving because Gemini rules transportation and walking and biking and skating and whatever else, flying. Okay, so Neptune moves direct at 13 degrees of Pisces on November 24th, so this can help the fantasies that we've been rolling around in move forward into tangible reality. November 25th and 26th and 27th, we have the Sun and Jupiter getting together in Sag, and then we have the Sun and Mercury getting together. And all of that's wrapped in with this Jupiterian energy. So good news, good luck, auspicious, random things, things expected, things that you plan. This is a beautiful time. So smile big with awesome expectation. Okay, so then we've got November 30th, we've got another little bump here with Venus opposing Uranus that often brings jolts or surprises or arguments or stressors in love and money. So just breathe deep and know that usually the things that come up with these type of transits feel really upsetting at the time, but they tend to pass pretty quickly. Okay, so these are the things that are most on my mind for the general transits. And I hope that you definitely go to my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, check out my wealth of resources on my free blogs. Also, you can sign up for my free email newsletter and get updates as far as um, these newsletters that I send out with the month ahead written. Also, when I update my, horos my written horoscopes at CozyBySweetStarlight.com. CozyBySweetStarlight.com, I have written horoscopes that often cover different information than I do in the videos. So you can see those, and when you sign up for my free email newsletter, you will know when I update the, um, the upcoming month, which of course everything is always ahead of time with me. Then if you're a traveler, go to astrologykissedtravelbliss.com. That is my travel astrology website where I do monthly travel astrology reports if you're traveling, special transits to note for travelers. And if you want a reading, I am still open. I have been closed for a long time on sabbatical from taking on new clients, but if you'd like to have me look at your chart, go to anniehelpsyou.com and you can book a reading with me live. And if you're interested in tarot, definitely go to my husband's website, I am Helios, I-A-M-H-E-L-I-O-S.com and check out his tarot course where you can learn tarot um, and he also does readings. So I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next month. Bye.